I was speaking to Phil Simmons on the night. I said, Phil, it's, it's 100 overs in a day. He knows how to batter Davies here at the end of the day, so he's going to have something huge. Um, we didn't know how huge huge would be, but um, again, the signs were there. Lara finished on 501 not out, another world record. That innings, combined with his 277 in Sydney and 375 in Antigua, proved what a talent he was. But beneath that grace and beauty of his batting lay a mental ability, the concentration required for such big scores. Great players like that, they don't just accumulate runs, they go and, they go and destroy. And, and uh, Brian, Brian could do that. Oh, you didn't like to watch him when you're in the team because you know he's taking the game away from you. But actually, you just love watching him bat. I just love watching him bat. We are talking about and he said, the thing is, you have a good day, you've got to have a great day. If you get 100, get 200. If you get 200, get 300. Because you have so many bad days. So when he got in, he just, you just didn't get him out. He could do that all day. He could do it for a week. It doesn't matter what's going on around him. I think that is his strength. I think his mental strength was, was the key. And of course, um, I think he reads the game better than anyone I've played with. Um, and the ability to, to predict where bowlers are going to, to bowl their next ball. Well, he's very consistent, that's the first thing. Um, at the end of the day, uh, my, my view is, is, is I, I rank consistency above everything else. How you do it is up to you, but he was very consistent in that he turned out runs regularly at every level. You look at the amount of doubles and triples that he's had, you have to be able to concentrate to score that many runs. You know, He's not one that will just get 100 and be satisfied with it. He wants to get big ones, and I think his concentration was key. Lara amassed over 2,000 runs at an average of 89.82 as Warwickshire won the treble of Championship, Sunday League and Benson and Hedges Trophy. It was one of the most remarkable seasons ever seen in English county cricket. You know, he, he was fantastic that year. The confidence that you gain from having someone like that playing with you is, is immense. I remember playing a middle six against Warwickshire and he came in batting number four, so he came in just before lunch, I reckon. And by stumps, he was 200 and whatever, not out. He's just beautiful to watch, he's a genius. He was different class. When he came to Warwickshire for that 1994 season, he was just the best player in the world at the time, unquestionably. But success wasn't replicated with the West Indies as the team continued its decline. Now captain, Lara oversaw the 98-99 series in South Africa. It was a disaster, as the tourists suffered a humiliating 5-0 series whitewash. I think that probably the most disappointing thing for him is the fact that um, he couldn't get us to, to win on a consistent basis. I think that probably was something that played on Brian's mind because he wanted success all the time. Um, but in, in the sports, you can't predict when you're going to have it and when you're not going to have it. And you know, we had some good days and some bad days, but I, I think he wanted to be a captain. He wanted to be a successful captain. Less than two months later, they faced an Australia side quickly making a name for themselves as one of the best in cricket history. They'd just come back from South Africa, having been being beaten 5-0. And the selectors put him on probation for his captaincy. They said it was weakness of leadership and so on. Came into the series with his neck on the chopping block with his, his captaincy. We won the first test in Trinidad. Uh, I think I picked up five in each innings. I think we bowled them out for 50, not many in the second innings. And we'd won so easily, it was almost like, oh, here we go again. I think everyone said, well, that's his time done. The second test in Jamaica, Brian Lark, before he tossed the coin, said, oh, this is the last time I ever have to do this. Thank goodness for that. The West Indies Cricket Board offered him the captaincy for the first two test matches, which is very unusual. And we're all going, oh, how good is this? Like, Brian, they've given up, they've given up. We took four wickets for nothing uh, the night before, and then Jimmy Adams and Brian Lara batted all day. Magnificent hit. It was unbelievable. And then we lost the test match. This doesn't, this isn't going to script. And there he goes again. That's another one. Then we went off to Barbados, which was an incredible game. This was the third test, and frankly, West Indies were going to lose. They were 108 for five, chasing 300. It wasn't going to happen. I can't remember how many runs we had, we had to get, but no one caught me a chance. Long hop, and he's put that out of the ground. 
beautiful shot. Glorious shot again from Lara. Brian had a uncanny knack of finding gaps in the field. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what batting's all about. You hit the ball where there's no fielders. <laughs> that is 100. The last man in was Courtney Walsh, who was one of the worst batsmen in the history of Test cricket. 40 odd ducks to his name. Uh, Lara was doing it all by himself. And I went out and said to him, I'm not, I'm not going to be the person getting out today, so unless you get out, there's no way we can lose this test match. And he looked at me and chuckled. I sat there with my pads on and everything because I was so nervous. Bless me. I ran out on the field with pads, everything still on, because I mean, I was so tense, you know, but to me, I think that was a brilliant innings for Brian. Big men hugged up each other at Kensington and all of them. We've been swooned. It was just amazing. It really was. Wisdom said watching him lead his men to victory was as if he'd led the infirm through a maze, which was maybe not terribly politically correct, but kind of summed up the way in which he alone stood above his teammates. You know, sometimes you just have to take your hat off and, and say well done to the opposition and O'Brien um, just played wonderfully well. So all of a sudden we're two one down. It was unbelievable. It just is not going to plan. We went off to Antigua. I think Brian scored 100 in the first innings. Um, and then I got him out for a duck, I'm pretty sure, in the second innings. And we went on to win that fourth test to, to draw it at two all. And we retained the uh, Sir Frank Worrell. Trophy. So it was an amazing series, and you know Brian Lara was a real standout. Well, that was a that was an amazing cricket series, really. Um, it was almost like it was us against Brian Lara and the West Indies. I mean, that, I mean that's just how well he played. In October 2003, Australia's Matthew Hayden scored 380 against Tess Minow Zimbabwe at the Wacker in Perth beating Brian Lara's world record by five runs. If it was going to be broken, that record, it would, would only be in Perth, um, such that, you know, the, the wins and make the one side of um, play pretty much on all the time. You miss hit at six. Um, so you, provided you sort of follow some simple rules, um, you can score really quickly there. And so when Matthew even got it, I knew that there was something, some fire in Brian Belly that he's going to get back there to be amongst it. I think he would have played on his mind, but I think he would have been very calculating about it. You know, he would have set his mind and said, well, fine, okay, if the opportunity arises again, then I'll, I'll click into, into whatever mode I need to click into to have a go again. So what did Lara do? He went out and, and pinched it back against England at Antigua again, the same place, a great sense of occasion. He just decided to go a bit better. His mental focus and his mental strength, the way he was um, kind of gearing himself up for that test match, you could sense something that was very special. There'd be days where he'd turn up and just say, I'm not that interested today. But that day 400, I was at short leg, and he just looked at me when he got to about 100, and he looked at me as if to say, I might go after my record here today. You know, you knew, he knew that it was such a flat pitch that he was interested in getting that record. 300 odd runs later, he, he got it again. Records, I think they're made to be broken. That's my perception of it. In November 2005, now aged 36, Lara added yet another record to his burgeoning collection. His 226 against Australia in Adelaide saw him overtake Alan Border as the highest run scorer in test history. Because he's so strong mentally, I don't think he believes anything is beyond him. And um, obviously, if there's a, a, a mountain ahead of him, I think he would try and climb it. You know, that, that innings where he broke the record, he made over 200 against us in Adelaide, and it was a flawless innings. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and I actually enjoyed it, <laughs> as much as it was an extremely long day in the field. Uh, it was such beautiful batting to watch.
I don't think he really gave any chances. He was he was aggressive. He looked in control the whole time. You know, and Brian can do that. Sometimes you look like you're going to get him out any time he's not switched on, and the, but the times he's switched on, he's just incredible to watch. Lara's career figures are simply outstanding. 131 tests, scoring 11,953 runs at an average of 52.88. He remains the only quadruple centurion in the history of test cricket and is the only man to score 500 runs in a single first class innings. Holder of several world records, the star of an increasingly average side, who often drove them to success through his own desire and will to win. Not just one of the finest batsmen, but one of the most aesthetically pleasing to ever grace the game. I've been on record saying so of opponents that I played against, he's right up there, if not best uh, batsman uh, I bowled to. Brian just had that specialness bordering on destructiveness uh, and, and failure. He walked that thin line and he always managed to come out on the side of genius. Unless you actually landed the ball exactly the spot on the wicket that you wanted to bowl it at, it was potentially going for runs. So and for me, it was as simple as that. He, I think, was the best player in our era. You know, he, he just had it all. He just wanted to play all the shots, and no matter how well you bowled to him, he would still play those shots. He had no chink against pace bowling. He was completely dominating against spin bowling. He had a 360 game. He was just going to rip you apart. In terms of pure aesthetics, and a guy that you wanted to watch at the crease. I don't think there's been a, a more attractive player in my era than Brian Lara.